the the mic if you if you need to speak. Um, actually, Reda, I think we'll have if people have questions. I think we'll have people raise their hand because we're not uh, it's not a big group. Uh, so I would rather keep it interactive. But if we find lots of questions, we can uh, we can have the questions sent on the um, uh, on the chat. Um, uh, one thing I would like everyone to open. Um, a website called menti.com. I'm sending it now. No, sorry, I sent it wrong. Menti, autocorrect.com. Uh, so please open this uh, this link. And as I'm gonna be asking you questions throughout uh, throughout the day, um, and asking you to interact and uh, submit your answers uh, on this. So uh, let's start. And the first thing is I would like to know your expectation. I'm gonna share my screen. So you see actually what I would like you to, uh, to answer. So can you all see my screen? Uh, Reda, not if you can see my screen. Uh, you're gonna be my, uh... <laughs> okay, cool. So if you can all go to menti.com, type the code and you will have a question. What's your expectations from the session today? Um, so if you can just put um, a word or two, I think everyone's allowed to put two words. So we can, uh, hopefully I can work on making sure that the session actually delivers to your expectations. So menti.com and the code is 959756. Yes. Oh, okay. Nine five nine. Yes. Nine, nine, nine five seven. nine seven five six. Am I am I, 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 If you kindly put it on the chat box, that would be great. Thank you so much. Uh, Oh, I just did it. Oh, thank you. And uh, yes, I'm waiting for your answers to start popping in. Okay, learn, analysis, fruitful, hopefully in trouble, competitiveness, strategy. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Finding opportunities. Okay, we're gonna learn also how to create opportunities. How to know a good market. Okay, that's interesting. You know, discuss this. What else? Active, cool. Yes, hopefully it's going to be cool. <laughs> uh, fruitful, learn. Okay, I'm going to give it another minute for everyone to submit their expectations. And then I would like to get to know you uh, better and to know about your project. So we're going to have to go to another slide as well, but I just want to give it 30, uh, 30 seconds or yeah, or less than a minute just for everyone to submit their expectations. And keep menti.com open because we are gonna have different questions throughout the day. Um, I like it because it allows us to see the interaction of everyone. Uh, that's, uh, that's it's amazing cool. actually, I okay. haven't used it before, but it's cool. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. 
بالوركينج فروم هوم بقى ميكس يو كده ديسكفر تولز اوكي كول سو اي ثينك بيبل وونتد وونت تو ليرن اباوت هاو تو كرييت اوبورتونيتيز هاو ذيس ار ذيس سلايدز ار جونا بي افيلبل سو اف يو هافنت اف يو هافنت انترد يور اكسبكتيشن بليز جو اهيد اند ات ذا اند اوف ذا سيشن ام جونا شير ات وذ غيدا سو يو كان اكشلي سي يور انسرز اند اف يو وونت تو كيب ذيم يو كان كيب ذيم اوكي Cool. Uh, so basically, people want this session to be like interactive. We want to learn about finding opportunities, uh, know how to evaluate a good market, and um, have and analyze opportunities. I think that's the key, the key, the key, um, uh, the key expectations. When I when I was thinking and preparing for this session, I thought. the outcome of the session what i hope for every one of you and i know you guys are working on projects and it's experiential and you're coming up with an idea throughout the project and you and throughout the course to implement it at the end what i would like for you to get out of this session is to learn how you stand out from competition so how to stand out from competition and to stand out from the competition there are two words there is competition so there is understanding the competition how we define how we define competition and in my opinion defining competition is very 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 important um and when we're talking about defining i will talk about this in details but when we're talking about define competition your competition is not necessarily a company that is doing exactly the same service that you're offering but it's a company that is delivering a benefit that competes with your uh, with your company so that's an important thing that we need to look at and this is what helps us create markets this is what helps us carry understanding this competition this definition of competition is what helps us create interesting markets and find um find good markets to operate in so this is the first part and this is going to be the first part of of the session is talking a bit about the competition the second part we're going to talk more about how you could stand out and um so how you could stand out in in this we will talk a little bit not a lot about validating your uh, about your idea and then well i'll give you some tools to learn how to validate your business your business idea because from the competition once you understand how the how your market looks like where are the gaps you will have some thoughts about if you need to make some adjustments to your business model you will tweak it but then you need to launch so how you can validate the model uh, that the model work okay and i would love to know more i know that you have uh, lots of uh, you have lots of exams but i know also that you guys have already come up with ideas already now so now question for you about the idea the idea so another mentee uh i am going to share it with you it's just different code i'm going to share my slide and i would like you to pitch to sell, to tell me the uh what's your idea about and think about something that is very precise uh what is your business idea what what are you offering um try to be very precise try to have it to the point i'm going to share the screen right now so we can have a basis for the discussion and i can also tailor my examples to the uh, businesses that you're talking about that you're operating in so can you see the slide this is another menti with a different code the code is 6524440 i would like um each one of you to enter your business idea just one line be precise and tell me what it is and we'll take 2 minutes for this
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Podcast construction company for interlocking locks that are environmentally friendly and energy saving. Okay. Unified TV, movie streaming services. Okay. One stop eco friendly shop where we offer many products, categories, and toys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Clean and clean the Nile and recycle proceeds. Okay. Interesting. Hot Couture, Fashion House, Egyptian, okay. Mm -hmm. Social marketplace business, okay. Increase positive social habits. Cool. We have, I like the variety of, of ideas, to be honest. Um, and I like the fact that some of them are uh, like highly dependent on digital and some of them are more uh, or less dependent on digital. So that's quite interesting. Taib, uh, the second question. How would you rate these statements? Okay, let me present again. Um, can you see the screen? How would you rate yourself on these statements? I know my competition very well. I have well, it's, it's still the same code. I have a well-defined value proposition. I plan an MVP. MVP mm. is a minimum viable product. Okay. So the left is strongly disagree, the right is strongly agree. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Other, uh, other responses? That's a quick one. Doesn't require a lot of typing. Let's um, uh, let me uh, let me share a few. Uh, let me first stop sharing screen. Okay. Uh, let me uh, share uh, some thoughts about competition, and um, and then I want to show you a couple of uh, videos about how we are thinking, how we should think about the market. So when we when we're thinking about the competition, as I was mentioning earlier, it's very important to define what is your competition. Um, I used to work for Uber, I used to manage Uber Eats. So it's wrong to think that Uber is competing just with taxis. Uber is actually competing with car ownership, right? So what, what means is that we need to look at the benefits, not necessarily the product offering. We need also to look at the benefits that my company is offering. If I am offering um, a, and there is always a substitute. There's always something that people can do instead of using, using my company. My company. Uh, so it's, okay. Uh, so it's, it's very important to understand, to define the competition correctly. And once, we do, once I define the competition, I need to look at different dimensions. I need to understand the company that my competitor, I need to understand the customer segment that they're targeting. I need to understand 
the um, the benefits that they are offering to their to their customers. I want to share with you, and these are templates that you really you can easily find online. But I I find them like very easy to um, to plan your thinking when you are uh, considering the competition, um, and to make sure that you have all the elements that you need. So that's um, that's a nice one, an alpha, and I need to present so. Um, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, okay. Let me make it bigger. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, Mishmohem, let me just, uh, let me zoom in. Ashen. I don't want to waste time in this. Um, if you look at this this very simple template, what it has is the company specific information. So it's things that are related to uh, the internal uh, the internal capabilities of the company. So the number of employees, the funding, uh, the number of customers they have. Um, the other bucket that is super important is the target customer segment. Um, so who are they targeting? I mean, I need to understand well um, the demographics and the psychographics of the customers. So I would be selling the same the same service, but I could be speaking differently, um, or speaking about the brand differently, or sending a different message, or targeting another niche customer. Uh, and you will you find you find this very common in the e-commerce websites, especially the aggregators. You find a lot of them are actually uh, selling the same products, but they're targeting certain uh, they're targeting uh, different uh, niches. And this is very important to understand. So you can define your gap. You can define where you would fit. And then you need to understand also the product specific aspects. So what are the features? What are the benefits? What are the, the what's the pricing? Um, how, what is the product strength in terms of the quality? And what are the weaknesses? And you need also to understand how, um, how to win. So why the customers? Yeah, I need to adopt the competitor mindset. I need to, to be that to what to be my competitor, and to understand how my competitor win in all, how, how my competitor wins in order to be able to um, create a space for myself. And I'm going to talk about how to create a space versus also compete with with others. Um, so that's this is I find this a very uh, a very easy um, to use a very straightforward template. It's not very easy to find this data. Um, so you find the data through different things. You mystery shop. You definitely like the first thing you do is you mystery shop. You you become your competitors' customer. So you can understand uh, your competition from their customers' point of view. That's a super important tool. Uh, you uh, you talk to people. Uh, you you befriend your your competitors. Yani, it's not always a secret uh, that you're launching a product that competes with a competitor uh, with a competitor. Taban, you won't be able to get all the data, but it's always good to understand how they operate. And this is your way to get some company specific data type. Um, and, and when we're talking about competition, uh, uh, some people mentioned in the expectations that they want to know how to have, how to operate in an attractive, uh, in an attractive market. Um, so attractive markets have certain criteria that are easy to identify. They are growing. Uh, they have. They are growing. So there is a lot. Uh, they are growing. They are uh, profitable. The cost base, the entry uh, barriers are are low. But what I wanted to, and these are things that you learn uh, through uh, the the Porter uh, the Porter uh, the Porter model analysis, and you have variable tools uh, for this. What I wanted to share with you today is something about how to create a market, uh, how to create a new market and how to use disruptive innovation to create a new niche for yourself. Because this is very important. After, after you understand your competitors, it's you benefit when you are creating more of a blue ocean strategy. And I'll share with you very short video about what's a blue ocean strategy. It's an old book that has been there for years, but I find that it's very useful. And the concept itself, the mindset is quite important. Um, so I'm gonna share the video right now. And I've been talking for a while. So I promise you in like in maximum five minutes, I'm gonna stop and we're gonna have some, some questions before we continue. Um, so let me share my screen. 
-mm. Okay. Um, so this is a, a little bit of a summary about the concept. I think the video works well. So. Rawya, there's no voice. We can't hear anything. There's no the... voice? No. Ah, really? Can you start okay. it from the beginning? Yeah. Okay, can you enter the kid Alamma? When we tried, you were able to hear something? Yeah. Huh. Let me just see two of those. Sorry. Let me first. No, just one second. Okay. Food market with the hopes of outperforming the born. Striving. Can you hear? It? Can you hear it yeah, now? that's okay. Yes, you can hear. Trying to beat the competition in an established market is a bad business strategy. If you try to enter an established market like the fast food market. With the hopes of outperforming the competition, you are adopting what the authors call a red ocean strategy. In today's world, thanks to the rise of technology and the widespread access to information, it's too easy for businesses to enter an established market and saturate that market. When a market is saturated, the only way to succeed is battling for market share, which turns the market waters bloody and red, hence the term red ocean strategy. If instead you focused on sailing past red oceans in search for blue waters of untapped market potential, you'd increase your chances of survival and profitability. When authors W. Chan Kim and Renee Milborn studied 108 new businesses across 30 different industries, 92 of those businesses adopted a red ocean strategy and aimed at outperforming the competition. The remaining 16 businesses adopted a blue ocean strategy and avoided competition in search for a new category that they could dominate. When looking at the collective profits of all 108 companies across several years, the 92 red ocean businesses only accounted for 39% of the total profits. That meant 61% of the profits were generated by the 16 blue ocean businesses. Upon further study, the authors discovered that the blue ocean businesses went on to dominate the respective markets for 10 to 15 years after their initial launch. So how can we use a blue ocean strategy to find an uncontested ocean of opportunity? And Okay, so that's basically, um, that's basically um, great benefits for having blue ocean strategy, uh, creating a new market that you're operating on in your own. Come on, after you launch this market, it becomes you attract other competitors, but at least you have the market domination for, for a while. I will give you, a, I want to give you an example of a company that is, that disrupted an industry because also you hear about disruptive innovation that disrupted an industry. And I'm biased to this, um, to this, com this company uh, because it's also by um, an HBS alumni. Um, uh, well, I like it a lot and I like their business model and I like their story. Um, it's run Rent the Runway. I am not sure how, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you know about it. Um, and let's, let's hear a little bit about their business model. And then I will invite you to reflect on, on yours and how you are planning to stand out from, from the competition. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Let's hear from uh, Brent the Runway CEO, and then we go more to a discussion. Let's dig deeper with Jennifer Hyman. She's the co-founder and CEO of Rent the Runway. Find out more about our company and how it's transforming the fashion industry. And I also have to say, changing the work rules. Ms. Hyman, welcome to Mad Money. Hi. Good to see you. Have a seat. So Honored to have you on the show. I think you've done enough for our staff, uh, all of whom use you uh, at every single occasion. That's amazing. No, we all, uh, they all do. Now, I want you to tell me about 
the closet in the cloud and give people the uh, rudiments of, of how Rent the Runway works. So we're disrupting the fashion industry by enabling women to rent clothes as opposed to buying them. And as you said, we started off with renting in special occasions, but we recently launched a subscription to fashion where women could have a closet on rotation, have unlimited possibilities of what to wear. And we're finding the average subscriber uses Rent the Runway 150 days of the year, as opposed to reaching into her closet. So that's just everyday them. workwear in order to look their best without breaking the bank. 100%. It's a complete consumer behavior change, where instead of going into your closet or buying something new, you're instead renting an outfit for work or for your weekends. Well, uh, you know, one of the things that they came to mind. Okay. So what Rent the Runway have done is basically they, their average, uh, their average person, their average user is using the closet rental, the, the rent run, runway for 150 days a year. That's a complete change in customer behavior. So instead, like think a day. So instead of opening your closet, you're actually doing a subscription and you're going to rent the runway. This is a complete disruption of the industry. This is creating a whole new space for, for them. This is not becoming, not being a fashion player. This is becoming a logistics, um, delivery, fashion. It's a mix of different things, but this is creating a new arena for you to operate in. Okay, so that's that's Taman and I like I like this example a lot because it's really a model for great innovation and great operation. Their operation is flawless, um, and. Uh, and and it's not it's not a simple fashion thing. Um, so I want to um, before we continue with how you could um, you could launch and validate your your um, your business. I would like to ask you a um, few questions on how um, what you how how you think you're different from your competition. Um, and I know that we ha I have I have the I have lots of the businesses here in the first slide the business ideas, uh, but uh, just raise your hand and tell me how you think you are different from your competition. You don't have to be creating a whole new industry. Not every successful business does this. This is just for inspiration and to make your uh, you, to think bigger. But I'm sure that every one of you is of a way to uh, differentiate yourself from competition. So who's going to be our first contributor? Raise hands or just unmute yourself. We're not a big group. OK, Nadine, Ulili, which, is, which one of those are your business? Um, your the business? one stop, uh, eco friendly shop. OK, how are you standing? Okay, so um, we're, yani, we think that what makes us different is that we're trying to offer all these different departments in one place. So there's uh, other like eco-friendly businesses that do this, but they offer certain categories of things. Um, yani, for example, just tools or just secondhand clothes, but we want to have all of this under one place. So I think this is one of the main differences. And we also want to like um, market our products um, in, in a nicer way, like have it um, more aesthetically pleasing and run our pages in a like a, a way that is pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, interesting. And it seems it seems like a, it seems like something that is different from the competition. However, I'm, and um, I'm going to use this as more of an opportunity to also share with you insights about how you think about your value proposition. So what you're telling me, uh, Delouette and Nadine, are a lot of interesting features. I would like to hear what's in it for me as a customer. And you mentioned lots of things, stuff, but I want you to think always in the mindset to be, to put yourself in the shoes of customer. Why would I come to you and not go to others? And who am I as a customer? Nadine? Hi, Nadine. Nadine, you're 
Rita, can we unmute Nadine? Okay. Yes, sorry about that. I couldn't unmute. <laughs> okay. So, so basically, what I was asking, صح? وديني بقى. Oh, oh. Um, we think in the, يعني, in the حاجات اللي تبقى يعني environmentally friendly products have um, kind of like different value propositions because um, our target, يعني, customer is someone who is already kind of is a little bit aware as a consumer, so they're searching for ways to uh, to not negatively impact the environment. Um, so yeah, the things that are environmentally friendly, we think that being green has a value in, in itself, yeah, that people who, are, who come to us, they want to have this kind of impact on the environment and we help them uh, like still use products like for example, uh, yeah, kitchen tools and toys and stuff like that, but, uh, but have it like be in a guilty free way or like they feel like they're doing something positive for the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So خلي uh, uh, please unmute it. عشان نتكلم مع بعض شوية. So so here so what you're telling me is I'm a customer, so I'm environmentally conscious. صح? So your target niche is an env is environmentally conscious. أكيد هتبصي كمان على البروفايل بتاعه. فهو أكيد عشان يجي عشان يبقى مهم بالنسبة له إن هو to use your website. I I am probably if I'm your customer, I'm environmentally conscious. I want to make sure that all my products are environment friendly, like all the things that I'm using are environment friendly. And I am probably busy, so I don't want to uh, to waste a lot of time shopping around because it's really hard to get these environmentally friendly things. And I want to make sure that I, and you're selling me a label, so you need to mm -hmm. offer me the proof that these customer, these products are actually environment friendly. And yeah, Habaza, Lao Bitulili, how uh, my purchase is actually uh, positively impacting the environment. So, yes, I would come well, to you actually, not because not because you're in it. So, so the value proposition becomes in you are targeting an, a target niche. So you are, yani, you stand out from the competition by targeting, uh, by focusing on a target niche that have a pain point. And we will talk about, about this more when we are thinking of validating our business model, um, how to validate our assumptions. And see, I'm already showing assumptions that I have a, a pain point of shopping around for different products. You need to validate this. And this is a good transition to, um, to what we're going to talk about next. That's why I wanted to chat about it. But thank mm. you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thinking about yourself uh, versus the competition. Adelini. Raise your hands, please. Raise hand, Alimin. Uh, Ali, Elena. Ali. Reda, uh, can you unmute Ali? Or he will unmute himself. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, Manish, and I just joined the Sawan Fuda Uli, and I'm ready. Filled in the, the things, but I got disconnected. The second thing. I'm asking you a question after we looked at okay how we can think about our competition, how you're different from your competition. What are you different offering differently from the competition? And I thought of Aslan, which which one is your business idea? Uh, the social marketplace. Uh... Okay, Mish. Okay, what's different? Okay, first, like if my competitors, the ones that I look at, are Masa and OLX. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in another indirect way, Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Uh, uh, those uh, independent sellers that I'm offering my platform use Instagram and Facebook to post their products, but so they have no means of, uh, of uh, accepting payments through the platform or uh, having Bordo automated shipping channels through the platform, through mm -hmm. Anka and Instagram, Facebook or OLX. Mm -hmm. uh, Plus, they don't really get a customized feel to their shop out to their. I ain't can't home be bought. Fana, yani, I'm I'm trying to make it different by making law. Kulo wahed if he wants to sell anything, they're gonna create their user, and then they're gonna have their own shop. That's like 
and you follow your friends, you follow your other shops in your area or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm cutting it, making it really easy to sell something instead of like posting it. But yeah, you have to meet in person, for example, in the OLX. And there's also... مش عايز اكلم انا حد اصلا ممكن مش عايز اتكلم مع حد في الحقيقه مش عايز اقابله I'm not comfortable with those types of interactions مثلا فبس I, I take a picture I post it uh, حد بيشتريها على طول انا I go I collect the item deliver it وبيقوم بيجي لك كاش على الواليت بتاعتك and you just mm-hmm. cash out ب, يعني لسه بقى في الحته دي uh, يعني when you cash out you either get it through a, a a payment channel vendor مثلا حاجات زي فوري وكده or you get it on your bank account بس الحته دي يعني I'm still not 100% on I'm trying I'm trying to resist حاجات كتير قوي because I love working on business models مع ناس uh, مع startups so I'm trying to uh, to back off from this because that's not the topic of the discussion بس عندي كذا سؤال actually that I want to ask you and I want you to keep it in mind while you're thinking of your idea and while you're designing your business model so you mentioned in the entire um, you're offering an alternative for the Instagram and the حاجات الناس اللي بتحط عليها why do people use do you know why people are using Instagram and Facebook um, and كل الحاجات دي to sell their products yes because they have reach عشان okay. uh, this, this is where the reach is at بس انا دلوقتي يعني those marketplace businesses of course you know there's like the chicken and egg problem فانا عملت ايه يعني in order to like get the first supply or first demand I picked a niche mm-hmm. and that niche mm-hmm. is handmade products and you know there's a lot of handmade products in Egypt it's a really big market mm-hmm. if you're familiar with Etsy مثلا in the US yes. uh, it's gonna, a really big this. market هما الناس دي they're selling channels but do, they sell through Instagram و Facebook و الكلام ده و هما they have a problem so I went to, the, to those people mm-hmm. و في الأول I was targeting uh, مثلا shops or independent sellers with followers less than 5,000 مثلا mm-hmm. بقى اكتشفت ان اللي عنده مثلا 40 or 50k برضو ده يسمع ايا mm-hmm. فابتديت ان انا I meet with those people and get to know their problems more and I tailored the thing يعني my model على أساس المشاكل اللي بتقابلهم And they're following us on the land of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to convert that in order to get that first demand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Then, that's the niche I'm focusing on for the first time. So to start with some supply and demand, then what I'm aiming at is that whoever wants to sell anything, it yeah, doesn't have to be someone, an entity. Okay. Yeah, and, So you're telling me that you're solving the the convenience problem for the sellers, right? So you're focusing mainly on the pain points of of the sellers, but both the sellers and buyers. Yes, but the buyers you mentioned reach. In the reach is actually why people go to Instagram and Facebook. So this is you haven't figured it out yet. I'm just thinking. Uh, so, yeah. Can you can you explain more? Because there's more than a reach problem for the buyer. It's and yeah, they can see the product, but so they can't like purchase it على طول. يعني it يعني ما هو أنا بقى those people that I talk to, هما هما they're still gonna use Instagram and Facebook as a way for people to browse and find their products. وبعدين اتفقت معهم إن هما they're gonna the conversion that will happen is that they start with them through Instagram and the things they have a channel for example that I have for example they hand out a lot of business cards they ask them any conversations with any one of them they will they would have the link or the, the extension to their shop on the app and their products and things like Instagram for example you can link um, a listing in, a, in an app to the picture on Instagram so you can open it on the app Yes, I understand. Um, but Anna, Anna, I have to, um, I have to move. I'm conscious of time. But Anna, I would like, I, I, I would like to, uh, to, fo- I can follow up the conversation with you and discuss the business model. Please. Nreda has my email, so you can email me. She has my email and my number, so she can share it with you. And I'm happy to take this conversation. Then I, Arda, like as a hagan told her, that are quite interesting and move to the second, to the second topic, which is basically how you can validate your, um, your. Uh, your business idea. Uh, so I mentioned a couple of interesting points uh, in uh, when you, you're building, when you're building uh, and you're coming up with an idea, you have certain assumptions. 
you have certain assumptions about the pain points, you have certain assumptions about the use cases, you have certain assumptions about the behavior of your, of your customers. Um, and there is something that is, is yani, that I love about, uh, about um, uh, entrepreneurs and about people who come up with ideas that they're very passionate about their ideas, right? And the game, you could listen to Zayi, but I do it, I listen to you, we test, we stress test their ideas and all of these things. But there is always the part of being a founder is being very passionate uh, about your idea and loving it. But part of being a very successful founder is understanding how being able to step back and hot idea and to actually be able to evaluate it and validate it and create a distance between us and their idea. It's very hard. That's why not a lot of founders are able to do this. That's why there is a lot of startup ideas do not actually, uh, uh, because you can easily, easily get carried out in your idea and work and spend money and time in developing the, an idea or a business that no one wants to use. So the trick is to validate your idea early on. The validated idea is they, that's, I'm sure that you heard about uh, the Lean Startup methodology and about the MVP and Kul Hagedi. If I'm going to share with you a very simple um, tool, uh, with simple ideas for validating your, uh, your business model. And we will um, and will also be available uh, for you. As I said, all the things are in the I'm not inventing them. But here is a validation board. The validation board, I like it because it helps you kind of organize your idea. And you have certain certain you have certain assumptions about hypoth about your customers. You have certain hypotheses. You have in um, your uh, customers. Um, or the the handmade uh, uh, the um, uh, the companies that do handmade products, where they want to offer them in a good way and want to streamline the process. You have certain uh, uh, assumption on the problem with their customer. So you have an assumption that the problem is, for example, in Aline's case, um, that the buyers of eco-friendly products. Are um, are too busy to search for uh, for the hagat in uh, حتت مختلفة. وبعدين I come up with a solution hypothesis. So I say that okay, أنا هعمل website في كل حاجات all the eco-friendly products that uh, a conscious uh, an environmentally conscious person would use. ماشي. Uh, how do we and and the idea is I need to test كل حاجة من دول. I need to test فعلاً how uh, is our my customers فعلاً هم بتوع الناس بتوع handmade uh, products. If I go talk to them, زي ما تعملت. I need to uh, know هل هي فعلاً عندهم pain point دي. I can go talk to them. I can look at their transaction. I can do حاجات كتير مختلفة. I'll look شوية examples. I want to sell to to. Um, to also test my hypothesis. هل الحل إن أنا أعمل لهم website تاني linked to Instagram كل الحاجات دي أو عم هو الحل لل uh, environmentally conscious people إن هم عندهم مكان في كل الحاجات. How can and here when the MVP comes um, uh, comes in, I want to develop حاجة صغيرة جدا just to test the solution بتاعي. وأرجع أقوم لو بستعمل sticky notes أو بستعمل cards أو أي حاجة. أخذ الحاجات اللي أنا حطيتها في الvalidation board دي هنا، okay؟ أقول والله دي validated، دي مش validated. فتحت a classified. This is invalidated. This is validated. okay؟ وأطلع ب hypothesis تانية. وأعمل validation تاني or another pivot. okay؟ في tools كتيرة. ممكن إن أنا أعمل prototype بسيط. ممكن إن أنا أعمل حاجات زي إن أنا I I have interviews with customers. I could do if I'm building a website. I can do very 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 basic website just to test if people are gonna use it. The most important thing, Phil. The most important thing when I am doing when I'm validating my business idea, إن أنا I need to break down the assumptions. لأن مش معنى إن my solution 
is is not working in كل assumptions بتاعتي غلط I might have assumptions that are actually working so I need to design an experiment that actually tests the different assumptions so it I could be in uh, in ال, uh, in الناس مثلا في الاكزامبل بتاعنا الدين ان الناس مش عايزه uh, to, uh, in الناس they are not too busy they actually enjoy shopping around way مش محتاجين website فيه كل الحاجات that could be something related to ف, 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 ف I need best to break down the assumptions بتاعتي كي, كا problem assumption كا customer assumption علشان so when I'm designing the business model I know where the problem is so I can fix it Okay. الحاجة الثانية, I need to design experiments that are inexpensive to execute. شطورة إن أنا I don't spend a lot of time and money in developing a product that fails. شطورة إن أنا to know what exactly are the elements, what makes me stand out from the competition. Okay. ف ففي الحالة مثلاً بتاع Trent the Runway اللي كلمنا عليها. Is that in the home market, and the home designer products, kitira awi fasatin designers, beta designers, and you can actually um, rent it, and uh, you can rent it and return it. So if I'm testing, if I'm testing, haga, I'm designing an MVP for rent the runway. What am I gonna do? I, mean, I just want to make sure. In the nest, accept the idea. Even home to rent clothing, we are gawhatin. إن هي تلبس هدوم and ترجعها تاني and to do and and she can do that that's that's the main thing that I need to test variety كل الناس بتحب ال variety I don't care about this so this is the the most critical thing to test so I can easily test this by having a very simple website with شوية فساتين that I buy we خلاص we let's launch it on a small group and figure out if it actually works so again to to have to validate your your idea what you need to do is to be very clear about the hypotheses that you want to test okay and to design experiments or mvps or prototype or that is very inexpensive to execute okay ده سريعا هسألكم كده كم سؤال تانيين نستعمل كده منتي شوية و and then um, I am gonna leave the, re the, the remaining 15 minutes for, um, for Q&A um, um, uh, Can you see my screen? Can you see the menti? Uh, can you zoom in, please, Yaro? Yeah, I'll present. I'll present. Okay, I'll present. Okay, I'll present. Okay, sorry. Need to close this. Okay. How can you validate your business idea early on? Again, this is Minty. Go to the code 1513534. Uh, I can add it to the uh, chat. And Uludi Keta, ideas. What can you do to validate your business idea? I shall not have a camel to fix it and fail to invest in launching it or not. What do I need to know? And how can I, how can I know this? Ideas? No? Hatshando, of course, how to how to validate your business ideas? Is it already validated your shabib? Okay. Okay. What aware customers struggle with? Maybe surveys, Paul, if we could reach them. طيب أنا هكمل على كل الحاجات اللي اللي بتتقال actually. Can build a prototype with a minimal feature uh, with core values with the core values. 
uh, prototype app, make sure that you're just using the basic features. I'm not sure how expensive it is to build an app, but on website, website might be less expensive. Um, you just want to test the, use, the usage. Uh, what aware consumers struggle with, maybe surveys, Paul, if I could reach, I could start with Instagram page. Um, is this the... Um, uh, is this the, um, um, uh, the one-stop shop for, I think it is, it might be it. Um, uh, so what our customers are struggling with. Uh, so yes, definitely you can talk to them um, or you can, I like the idea of an Instagram page that has different products. I think that's an awesome idea. It's very inexpensive. It's easy to do. Test in the market, that's generic. How can you test in the market? Again, you wanna do something quick, inexpensive and answers your question. MVP to test in the market, yes. What's the MVP looks like for your product? And again, an MVP needs to have the key differentiating features in the competition. If I cannot have an MVP that is low and value proposition is speed, I cannot speed of delivery or I'm an app food delivery, for example, I can, and the key uh, differentiating factor is speed. I cannot have an MVP that lacks speed. Let them attest the key, uh, the key uh, important feature. I believe primary research would be the most effective unbiased target market or even non-target market survey sample. So here's the thing about market, um, about uh, primary research. Primary research is very expensive. The Hega. With Hagatania, and you usually um, uh, it takes it takes some time, and if you are doing pure market research without a prototype, and again this is also an opinion, a personal opinion, um, I like always to test the idea with client unless you are um, you are making this market research primary research on a prototype so you're offering the prototype and asking people for their opinion about it but i think this would be quite expensive because you will have the um, uh, the cost of building a prototype and also the cost of running a primary uh, market survey and remember you are a startup back to the Wahaba, you're a startup, uh, you're still uh, launching in the idea stage, you don't have that much money. So let's see, think realistically. Uh, Anna, I am done with the things that I wanted to, um, to cover with you guys today. Um, I have one question, but honestly, I don't want to, um, I don't want to, uh, I would rather leave the last few minutes for questions. But Anna, can my question to you, and I'm gonna say it so you can think about it. What's your immediate next steps? Learning what you've learned today about, um, about the competition, how, um, uh, what you need to do in order to stand out from competition, how you can think of yourself versus competition and how to create new territory. What's your immediate next steps? I don't want you to answer it now, Ashen. I want to leave a few minutes for questions and answers, but think for yourself. Try after this session to take five minutes and to write two things that you want to do for your business. I know it's a project, but uh, who knows? Like a lot of cool ideas. I know it's a project part, of course. A lot of cool ideas and real businesses came out of projects. Um, so the more I think you you take this project and this course, uh, treat it as a real project, the more you will get out of it. Um, so that's my invitation to you. Uh, just answer the question after the session of what's your immediate next steps and work on that. Um, and um, that's all. I, I hope it was beneficial. Uh, please, happy to answer any questions on any topic, whether... Uh, related to what I presented or something else, if you want an opinion about something. Thank you, Rawia, very much for this uh, very interactive session, and I'm sure they have a lot of questions. Uh, uh, please raise your hand if you have a question, Ashan Rawia, and you can mute yourself at any time. So people are answering their immediate next step in the chat box. Uh, nice. can you... I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, we actually can, you can. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it okay if I like contact you over email? Maybe. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm, I'm going to write a conversation. I sent you the email, Yad. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bye. Sure. Uh, Rawia, okay. we're in the middle of uh, uh, midterm exams, so that's why everyone like uh, uh, have a lot of uh, <laughs> things to do in their mind. Yes. They are ready for answering Validating questions, that. not not putting questions. Okay, okay, cool. So I can I can ask questions. I, I have lots of questions that I want to ask. Uh, if people are are up for it, uh, I want to hear more about. So I heard from Ali. Um, I want to hear who's presenting the video streaming uh, idea. He had the can be old video streaming idea. I am specifically interested in, in this because I love the industry in general. And I also Some write, students so that's were in and then they're game. out now. So maybe it's not around. You don't have it on your uh, mentee thing? Okay, okay. <laughs> you don't have the name on your mentee thing? I have it on my mentee. No, I have no, I have the idea. But I have the idea. I don't have the name of the person. It's not linked to, uh, to Zoom. Uh, it's not linked to Zoom. So, um, so yeah, who... Anyone wants to share? So I'm. I'm I, I wanted to know what, um, uh, how this idea stands out uh, from the competition. Uh, if no one is here, I'm happy to answer any questions. Or honestly, I'm happy to give you back, guys, like a few minutes. We don't have to stay until seven fifteen. I know everyone is busy. Uh, so thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for your interaction. It's been a pleasure, and I love the energy. Uh, always good to be uh, back talking to AUC students and AUC uh, faculty and AUC uh, team uh, back home. Well, hatta, though I'm, I am home, actually. <laughs> I'm still working from home. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Rabia, so much. This was really good and interactive session. I'm sure they have a lot to take back home uh, from this session. And uh, everyone is asking about your email, by the way. So uh, <laughs> I'm happy to talk. Here if anyone yeah. wants it. Uh, yeah. I can uh, put it. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, so you can basically say how you want it. Uh, do they type in, in the subject? Uh, what? Yeah, just tell me that. Just tell me that you're from the session. Just so I, uh, I because I have lots of unread emails. <laughs> so exactly. I'm that, sure everyone that, does. That's uh, that's uh, so it doesn't go to uh, to the unread emails. All behind so just, in emails. So you're all behind. Yeah, in emails. Exactly. Uh, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Rabia, so much. Thank you so Enjoy much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.